friends, welcome back to my English comfort zone. Uh, today, we will complete our lesson. Remember, we have talked about the past continuous tense, and I have told you before that this idea is broad, is big. So we will divide it into two parts. Last previous video, I gave you the first part, and today I'm going to complete the new idea about the past continuous tense. But before starting the new idea, I wanted to give you some brief summary or I would say some warming up about the ideas I have talked to you about. I told you about the meaning of the past continuous and I told you the past continuous has a lot of meanings or some meanings. One of them is to show that an action was in progress at a specific point of time in the past. And then I gave you the formation of the past continuous was or where plus verb, dynamic verb based form plus ing. And I told you that was um, is used um, with the first and the third person singular, that's I, he, she, it, and where, with they, we, and you, was and where the second form of verb to be in the past symbol, together with a base form of a verb, a dynamic verb, plus ing. This is the main form of the past continuous. And then, then I give you some uh, idea about uh, ideas about uh, the different forms, the uh, positive, like I was drinking or I was playing tennis, the, the negative, and I told you to change a verb into negative. Here we have to put, we simply put the uh, negative form, the negative word that's not after was or where, so it becomes was not or where not. Uh, and to, to change it into a question, we simply uh, replace or exchange the place of the helping verb, auxiliary verb was or were together with the subject. So I was becomes was, I or he was becomes was, he or they were becomes were they, and so on. And um, also, I give you some uses of the past continuous and among the most important or uh, uses of the past continuous are, uh, let me remind you that a verb was or a dynamic verb was in progress at a specific time, uh, a specific point of time in the past, like when I say, I was drinking my coffee uh, yesterday at three o'clock. Um, so what were you doing at three o'clock yesterday? I was drinking my coffee. And I told you also that the past continuous was used to show a state, a state or a continuous state in the past or repeated state in the past, like it was raining in winter, all the winter last year. Um, also, I tell you that um, this is another this is another uh, another definition of the past continuous that the past continuous is also used uh, to show that uh, two actions that happened or met or occurred at a specific point of time in the past one of them is shorter and nearer to the present that is the best symbol and and this also interrupted the first one or the one that was in progress when that happened when the second action happened like when i say for example i was drinking my coffee when it rained so um, raining started after after my after I after I started to drink my coffee, but and I said here the action that is nearer to the present time, the interrupting one, that is the past symbol. Um, this is a shorter one, and the longer one or the one that was in progress. Uh, uh, that is in the past continuous. And I told you also that uh, this interruption may be real and may be just in time. Maybe real when I say I was drinking my coffee when it rained, so I stopped drinking my coffee and get out to see the rain or open the window, open the door, whatever. So I stopped my, my the, the, the first action. Oh, just in time. I was still drinking my coffee while it rained outside or oh, it started to rain outside. And I told you also that the past continuous is used to show for, uh, um, 
on permanent or we can see temporary habitat in the past. Like when we say, uh, for example, he used to write, for example, novels about the vet or these days or those days, he was writing, for example, plays. We said also that the past continuous is used to, uh, to explain or to give an idea about negative feelings or inconvenience uh, or some anger because of the repetition of some, uh, we can say, idle or unneeded or unwanted, uh, the repetition of these actions in the past. Like, uh, for example, uh, I was angry with her. She was always, she was always leaving her room in a mess. And I have said before also that uh, here to show the inconvenience or the anger or to express the negative feelings here, we have to use some adverbs of frequency, mainly frequency, mainly three adverbs which are always, forever, and frequently. And uh, also, I gave you some idea about the past continuum that it is used to, to explain a change in mind, change in the state of mind, or a change in the uh, in opinion, for example, like when I say, uh, uh, I uh, decided to spend my summer vacation in London, for example, but I changed my mind by changing my opinion and I traveled to America whatever. And also, I have told you that the best continuous is used to show, or to explain, or to tell, uh, or to describe the background of a story, of a novel, of a play, of a written form. And uh, also, we have assured an idea that uh, to talk about progressive tenses in English or um, or uh, any progressive tense in English, we do not, we do not, mm, we do not uh, assure the idea, or do not assure the main actions. We do not focus on the action itself, but rather we focus on we focus on the duration of the action, on the continuity, on the prog progress of the actions. And for the past continuous, it mainly the past continuous mainly assures the, the idea of continuity, of progress, not the duration. The duration we we will take, we'll talk about it within the past, uh, within the past perfect tense. But here, with the past continuous, the past continuous mainly assures, mainly focuses on the continuity of the action, the progress of the action at a specific point of time in the past. And we don't know exactly when the verb started. We exactly, we exactly know that the verb was in progress, was in a continuous mode at a specific time in the past. But exactly it started when? This we cannot know by the past continuous, we know by the past symbol. And this is one difference between what I will explain in detail after some, after some time. I think also I told you that the past continuous is used to show uh, unpermanent or we can say uh, actions and so on. And I think now I could already can give you an idea about it, uh, what we have said before. Today, today we are to start with the, the adverbs used with the past continuous. So, we have many types of adverbs, and I have divided them according to the meaning of the uh, intended by the adverb. The meaning intended by the adverb. And some examples on, like, we have, for example, while, just as, and as. While, just as, and as. Remember, the three connectors, the three adverbs have the same meaning, have the same use. The three have the same meaning, have the, th the same use. So I use, if I use while, it is the same if I say just as, if I say that is the same if I say as. What about the meaning conveyed by, way, by while? Here, the two verbs, the two verbs with while may have continuity in the past, may have length of time in the past, and may go together in the past for a specific time, and so they both may be put in the, or forward in the past continuous. Like, when I say, for example, why I was reading a book, my father was repairing the car. 
reading a book and pairing the car both happen at the same time. Both have length in the past and both have uh, both were in, in, uh, pro in progress at a specific time in the past. So they were, they both are used in the past to continuous. This is one case. Another case, while can be used to show the longer action, the longer action or the continuous action or the progressive action uh, together with a past form or together with a short action. Like when we say, for example, when we say, for example, I came home while it was raining, while it was raining. So what follows while? the longer, the continuous, the progressive action that was raining. And what comes before or what comes in combination, this is the past symbol, that is the shorter action that is came, which is interrupting one. So came home interrupts uh, being uh, the raining. And here, this is the interruption of time, of course. So we have while, just as and as, the three have the same meaning, the three have the same use. And I wanted to assure an idea here. When we use a connector, like while, like when, like sense or whatever, when we use a connector at the very beginning of a sentence, so this sentence is formed by two simple statements. Okay, when we use the, uh, the, the connector at the very beginning, we put a comma after the first statement. So in this sentence here, while I was reading a book, here is a comma, and then my father was repairing the car. But putting, putting the, uh, the connector in the middle, Erase the comma, omit the comma, there is no comma at all. Like the second one, I came home while it was raining. While in the middle, no comma at all. This is for while, just as and as. Also, we have another connector, that is when. When is used in the past symbol here, in the past to continuous, and it is, um, it is almost followed by the shorter action. That is to say, it is almost followed by the past symbol. So we can say, I can say, for example, when I opened, when I opened the door, the children were playing. When is followed by the simple past that is opened, then we have the uh, past to continue that is were playing. And sometimes, Sometimes it is used instead of while, that is to say it is followed by the longer action, it is followed by the continuous action, but informally, informally. Formally, it is followed by the shorter action, the interrupting action, that is the past symbol. But informally, it is sometimes used uh, instead of while, that is to say it can be followed by it can be followed by a continuous mood, but this is informally, and this is a spoken language, not written language. Another idea, another kind of adverbs. We have the adverbs of frequency. Mainly I'm talking here about always, constantly, and forever. Why are these, uh, these three only? Because before a short time I say, these are used with the past and continuous to show negative feelings, to convey inconvenience, to convey anger, upset, uh, insufficiency because of the repetition of unneeded actions in the past or unwanted or silly actions in the past. Like he was always shouting at me. This means when I say this sentence, I was sad with him. I was upset with him. I was inconvenient, insufficient because, because he was always shouting at me. So always to emphasize the idea of inconvenience or forever or frequently or constantly, and these can be used in the same place. That's to say after verb to be after was or where. Another type of adverbs is at that time or uh, on those days. At that time or on those days. These, from the meaning here, we can understand that they can give an idea about temporary habits. They can give an idea about temporary habits. 
not stable one, not permanent one. Like FOC, for example, he used to write novels, but that time he was writing plays. I will say used to write, this is the permanent habit, because permanent habits in, uh, in the past are expressed by using used to plus the verb in the infinitive form. But the, the, uh, the unpermanent ones or the temporary ones are ex in the past are used, are expressed using the past continuous. So we have here was writing, was writing when I read this sentence, he was writing plays those days or that time he was writing plays, I would understand quickly that it wasn't his permanent habit, but it was his temporary one. He did that for a short time, not for a longer time. Then a fourth type of adverbs that we have all, we have all plus a span of time in the past, a past span of time, like all the morning, all the night, all the day, all the, um, yeah, all the day yesterday, for example, all the evening, all the afternoon, like that. When I say I was cleaning the garden all the morning yesterday, I was cleaning the garden all the morning yesterday. Here, um, all is used here, all to emphasize the idea of continuity. At that time, the whole morning, what was happening? What were you doing? Oh, you was cleaning the garden. So the idea of progress, the idea of continuity, the action of cleaning was in progress the whole morning or all the morning. So what about the verbs used in the continuous? First or first continuous, we have while as or just as the two actions. The two actions go together in the past and they both have length, they both have, uh, are in the continuous mood or one of them is shorter, one is longer and the longer it was while is expressed after a while. Then we have when, and we say when is followed by the shorter action and the informally in a spoken language can be used instead of while. And then we have adverbs of frequency like always, constantly, frequently, and these adverbs to show inconvenience or negative actions because of the repetition, negative feelings because of the repetition of the bad actions, silly actions in the past. And then we have at the time or on this day, temporary habits. And then we have all plus a um, span of time, specific span of time in the past or past span of time to show the continuity, progression or progress of an action in the past at a specific time, of course, at a specific time in the past. Then we come to talk about some writing rules. I think I have talked about them before, but quickly we will move through them and I will give you this idea. Uh, if any verb ends in E, the final E, dynamic verb ends in a final E, just one letter, cancel the final E before adding ING, like move moving. But if it is double, no cancel at all. So we cancel the last letter only if it is one, just one E. Another idea. If the verb is one syllable and it goes or it takes the, 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 the pattern of consonant, vowel, consonant. And I have told you before, what do we mean by consonant, vowel, consonant? Consonant, a vowel in English, a, E, I, O, U, mainly A, E, I, O, U. Others are called the consonant. So if we have the pattern of consonant, vowel, consonant, so we double the last consonant before adding I, N, G, like cut, cutting, chat, chatting, head, hitting, and so on. If this is the last three letters of the verb, or even if the verb as a whole is three letters, some verbs are consist of one syllable, but more than three, three letters, like chat, for example. The last three letters take the form or take the pattern of consonant, vowel, consonant, double the last consonant before adding ing. But if the verb is more than one syllable, two syllables, for example, we look at the last syllable. The last syllable of the verb, if the last syllable is stressed, 
uh, stress means we utter, we pronounce, we say strongly. And they have the same pattern, and it has the same pattern of consonant to vowel consonant. We double the last consonant before adding ing, like begin, beginning, prefer, preferring, and so on. Okay, number three, if the verb ends in ie, change ie into y, then add ing, ie final, to be changed into y. Then add ing like die, d i e, d y i n g, tie, tying, da, dying, and the tie, tying. So i e final must be changed into y because if we don't change it, will be spelling is not English. At the same time, it's not easy altogether to say or to utter the word. So die, dying, and tie, tying, change i e into y, then add i n g. Yes. Then we come to a very important idea in English, very important idea related to the continuous tenses. So talking generally, not all verbs can be used in a continuous mode or progressive tenses. We have how many types of verbs in English? We have three types of verbs. We have dynamic verbs or action verbs or movement verbs. Then we have stative verbs or static verbs. Then we have mixed verbs. We have three types, three types of verbs. Always we use the dynamic verbs can be used easily in continuous or non-continuous mode. If this is not, this is not uh, difficult to all together. These verbs show motion, show action, show movement, like read, write, study, play, whatever. This can be used easily in, uh, in progressive mode or non-progressive mode. But look at the second detail. We have static, static verbs or stative verbs, stative version, static American. Um, what do we mean by the stative verb? Stative verb is the verb that has no motion, a verb that gets no action at all, a verb that shows a state, state of being, a state of mind. Then because this verb has no motion, it cannot be used in a continuous mode. That is to say, it cannot be used in any progressive tenses, in any continuous tenses, in any continuous mode. We have many types of these verbs. These verbs like love, believe, cause, to have, and the others. And we have a lot of these, a lot of kinds of these verbs, like positions, for example, like have, um, possesses, belong to, pack, consist, involve, include, contain. Verbs of senses like sound, hear, smell, see, look, taste, touch, feel. Verbs expressing emotions like love, like, dislike, hate, adore, prefer, care, mind, want, appreciate, need. Verbs of feelings like desire, wish, hope, value. Verbs of mental state like know, believe, doubt, think, suppose, Recognize, forget, remember, imagine, mean, agree, understand. Verb that show a state like disagree, deny, promise, satisfy, realize, appear, astonish, please, impress, surprise, concern. We have some other verbs, cost, measure, way, owe, seem, fit, depend, matter. These are different types. These verbs, as long as they do not have any motion at all, cannot be used in progressive tenses. Any progressive tense, not only the past continuous. Like, if I see, for example, the food was tasting delicious. This sentence is grammatically incorrect because, because does the food, I say, did the food, for example, show any action when tasting delicious? No. So 
it is it, it can't be the verb test here cannot be used in a continuous mode rather we can use the we can use the uh, past symbol so the food tasted tasted well or delicious or whatever but this is a general idea yes this is a general idea um i see for example i have a car i had a car i can see i was having a car why because have here is a, a possession verb and uh, it means own it means the process so we cannot use the, we cannot use it in a continuous mode but sometimes every english had a lot of exceptions by the way and every rule has many exceptions there is an exception here as a general idea static verbs cannot take i energy but it can a verb a static verb can take ing form or can be uh, continuous or used in a continuous mode under one condition if there is emotion or a movement related to the verb if there is emotion or a movement related to the verb accompanied with the verb like what i can say i was testing my food this is right Yes, taste is a verb of senses, but it can be used here in a continuous mood. Why? Because when I taste, the verb itself is stated, but related to the verb, to using the verb, when I tasted the food, when I tasted the food, I was moving my hand to take a spoon, for example. Uh, I was moving my tongue, moving my jaws, moving my lips moving different parts of my body so there are different different movements related or accompanied with the verb so the verb can take ing the verb can take ing i can say she was smelling a rose this is right yes this is right why because smelling the rose she she moved her hand to catch the rose or to hold the rose uh, she moved her nose, for example. She moved her eyes to see the room. So we can say yeah, that there are a lot of a lot of motions or movement is some um, of movements related to the verb or accompanied with the verb. So it can be used in a continuous mode to think about think about the verb, the static verb. If it is as a whole aesthetic, or if there is movement related to, so it can be used in a continuous mode. And then I can give you another idea related to the uh, dynamic verbs. I said dynamic verbs do not uh, always take ing form or can be used in continuous mode, but short time, short term verbs. Verbs that take very short time to happen, like start, end, begin, shut, open, close, and others. These verbs took a very short time. Mostly, we do not use these verbs in continuous mode. So, so I say, I was shutting the door when I saw her. No, I shut the door. Not was shutting, because the action of shutting is very short in time. So we cannot use it in a continuous formally, of course, and in writing. I'm talking about standard English, not spoken English. So short term time verbs, even if they are action, if they are dynamic verbs, if they have action or movement, they do not or they cannot be used on, in continuous mode because a continuous mode needs some time. Progress. Okay. Move to the third idea, the third type of verbs. I said dynamic verbs always use the own continuous mode. Then we have static verbs used in, in continuous mode under one condition to be to have a relation uh, to have a movement related to the verb rather they are always uh, stative and they cannot be used in uh, progressive tenses we have a third type of verbs these verbs are called mixed verbs 
What do we mean by mixed verbs? Mix means the verb carries more than one meaning or conveys more than one meaning. Or we can understand the verb, we cannot determine the tense of the verb unless we determine, we know which meaning exactly is expressed by the verb. So we can say these are group of verbs, not many in English, but we have to think about the meaning of the verb before using in a simple mood or a continuous mood. So among these verbs, we have appear, have, hear, look, miss, see, smell, taste, think, weigh, think well. This is my tap here. Think well about the meaning stated by the verb. Like, if I say I had a car, the verb have here, that is in the past simple had, is non-continuous verb. It means own. It means a possessor. And the verb that show ownership, like have, own, possess, and the others cannot take ing. So it's in a simple mode only, had a card, simple past. But when I say, I was having in my lunch, if this is right, exactly right. Why? Because have here doesn't mean to have, to, to possess, to own. It means to eat. And the eat is a dynamic verb. So we can use ing form, it's normal here. I was having my lunch. I heard jazz music yesterday. Here is non-static. It's non-static because it's a, it's a static verb because it's one of the verb of senses. But I was hearing strange voices. This is a, a, this is a continuous verb. Verb here here is a continuous is a continuous verb. She appeared smart. I can see she was appearing, no wrong, she appeared. No motion here is related to the verb, so the verb is non-continuous. But she was appearing in a famous movie. Appear here means not to seem, not to look, but to act. And the act, um, the verb act is a dynamic one. And also he looked tired. He has seen tired, static, but he was looking at me. There is a movement here, looking at me, my eyes, um, uh, moving the eyelashes, moving the eye to look at me. So this is a progressive verb. I miss my friends. This is the feeling, non-continuous. Non it means to long or to have longing for someone, to miss someone. So this is static verb, but I was missing my favorite movie, cannot reach. This is a continuous verb. I saw her see one of verbs of senses, also in a simple mood, static. I could see the verb see also can be used um, to mean understand. And here also it is a static verb. The table weighed 20 kilos. This is the state, okay? So in a simple mode, but she was weighing, there is an action here. She get a balance, She uh, then she get on the balance, uh, moving the legs, moving the hands. There is a movement here, so it can take I in you or progressive mood. I thought about my family. This is the state of mind, none progressive verb. But I was thinking about my exam. No, this is a continuous verb. Thinking about my exam, I take some papers, I answer some questions, I take a pen to write, to revise, to memorize some. Like that, there is a movement also here. So the meaning conveyed here, what thinking here maybe means revise, maybe answering, maybe questioning, like that. So this is a continuous verb. Think well about the meaning of the verb before using in a continuous mood. Uh, so these are the three types of verbs in English, uh, dynamic verbs, then we have static verbs, then mixed verbs, and, and now we have special case. 
What about verb to be? Can verb to be, we use verb to be as auxiliary or auxiliary or as a helping verb in the second or in the past symbol that was aware before the dynamic with ing. But the verb to be itself, verb to be itself can be used in a continuous mood, can under three conditions, only three cases, not more. What are these? To sum up, to, to show a temporary habit or a temporary state, okay, a temporary state is better. Uh, to show that someone was behaving as stereotypically or to another type or another form or another shape that wasn't in my his or hers. And number three, uh, to show that um, someone acts in a bad way or acted in the past in a bad way. Let me give you some examples. When I say she was American, she was American. Verb to be was in the past symbol as main verb of the sentence was American. Really, she was an American citizen. This is the simple mode. This is the simple past. What can I understand from this sentence? I can understand that was here is the main verb of the sentence and that she was really an American citizen. But when I say she was being American, what is the difference? Was, was is an auxiliary verb and verb to be, verb to be that is uh, the irregular verb in the base form plus ing shows being American. Verb to be and verb to be. Verb to be as auxiliary and verb to be as main verb with ing. What can I understand from here? It is the same meaning. Does this sentence convey the same meaning as the first one? Do I understand when I read this sentence that she was American, an American citizen? Of course, no. This means at that situation only, at that time only. When I saw her, she was acting in an American mood, in an American form, in an American way, in an American style, but really she wasn't American. So she behaved stereotypically to the American mood. If they said or way or style, if this is one, when someone, this is one use, some verb to be in the continuous mood, past the continuous mood, in order to show that someone was acting stereotypically to a mood that wasn't his or hers. Number one, come to the second exam. I'm gonna say she was being formal. She was being formal. If we say she was formal, mostly this means that person, she, uh, her nature, her way is to be formal all the time, but she was being formal, different because I would say that at that situation only she behaved this way, or this is a temporary situation. If this is a temporary situation when she behaved uh, formal, this means that she was informal, but that time only she behaved in, in, uh, in a formal way. So let me give you another example. When someone acts, uh, act in a bad way. If I say she was being rude or in uh, or impolite or severe, I put any adjective, any 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 silly adjective after it. She was being silly, for example. Um, here, um, verb to be is used mainly to show that uh, she acted in a bad way. When I say she was silly, this means all the time she is silly. She's not good, but was being, it wasn't her. It wasn't her habit to be that, that way. It wasn't her nature to be that way. But in that situation only she behaved, she behaved badly or she behaved in unsuitable way. So verb to be in a continuous mood in the past is used in three cases to show that someone was acting stereotypically to, 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 to a method or to a way that wasn't his or hers, to show that someone was acting in a bad way, to show a temporary situation, 
in the past or behaving in a specific way in also the past. Now I finished the past symbol specifically and I come to make a comparison between the past symbol and the past, the past continuous. I finished the past continuous and I come to make a comparison between the symbol mood and the continuous mood in the past. So what is the difference? Always we make comparison between tenses to be able to understand them well because this is of the utmost important importance because understanding the tenses well and the differences, similarities between these tenses will help us use them correctly. Will help us to use them correctly. If this is so important, vital in written English, for written English, standard English. So what is the difference or what or and the similarity or what are the similarities between the two tenses? Simple, fast, and continuous. Number one, the past symbol shows that an action started at a specific point of time in the past, so we know exactly when the verb started, while the past continuous is used to show that the action was in progress at a specific time in the past. What do you mean by these words? I have told you before, if you wanted to focus on the action, when the action started and when the action ended, use assemble tense. And when you wanted to focus on the continuity or progress or the duration of an action, use a continuous mode. So for the past continuous and the past symbol, if I say, I ate my lunch at four yesterday, this means I started eating exactly at four. So I know exactly when I started to eat at four. But I was eating is completely different. Was eating means at four, the verb was in progress. This means I started before four. This means I started before four. So this is the difference. Knowing exactly when a verb started and ended in the past, this is the first symbol. The verb was in progress at a specific time in the past, it is the best continuous. So this is the one difference. Come to the second. The best symbol is used to express permanent habits. Well, the best continuous to the past continuous to explain temporary habits like he used to train in the morning used to train in the morning, but that time he was training in the afternoon. Look, used to train. We express the permanent habits in the past using used to the expression used to plus the base form of a verb, of the verb. So used to train, this is permanent action, permanent habit, but was training, was, Verb plus I energy, this is a temporary action. This is a temporary habit. So the past symbol is used to, to express the permanent habits, while the past continuous is used to show to express the temporary ones. A third, a third difference between them, the past action, the past symbol action is used to interrupt the past continuous. So I will return to say again, the shorter action, the interrupting action that is nearer to the present is the past symbol. The longer action, the continuous action, progressive one that is far from the present, the interrupted, this is the past continuous sum. So I was watching, this is the interrupted action. The bell rang, rang here is the interrupting action. What comes next? What interrupted the first one? Then come to the fourth difference. The past assembly is used to emphasize the main action, while the past continuous is used to emphasize the background action. The past assembly is used to emphasize the main action, as I have said before, Sample tenses in English focus on the action, on the verb, 
the main verb of the sentence, while continuous ones focus on the background actions. Background, these were in progress or were in continuous mode because they are temporary, because they are they are not permanent, so they are background, not main. The main action is the past symbol here. While I was writing an email, my mom called me. So what is the most important? What is more important here, called or was writing? That's called, because called is the past symbol. This is the main action of the center. This is the main action. The main action means the one intended, the one that has a focus, the one that is most important here and was writing, this is the background, this is the background action. Now we finish, we come to an end. Uh, I hope you understand the whole idea well, as well the difference between the two, the two tenses, the simple past and the past, um, and the past continuous. Here are some assignments of the different types, sometimes about using the simple past and the, and the past continuous only, sometimes about the negative, about setting questions, some are MCQs or choice, some to differentiate between different types of the, of the verbs and some with using the, uh, the connectors while, when, and so on. I hope you will get the whole idea well. And remember, working hard is the best for the most successful uh, life. Work hard uh, with my all best wishes and sincere wishes for all of you. I hope you understand my lesson well. See you.